Hey, everybody, you're listening to the Inspirational Power Hour. And guys, listen, you have no idea how super excited I am today because I'm talking to a very, very special woman, a very busy woman. And uh, we all know and we've loved her ministry for years. I'm talking about none other than Miss Dorinda Clark Cole. How are you doing? I am wonderful, Sandra. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for taking time and for sharing with our listeners. We really appreciate it. This is the first time we, we're so excited. Oh, I'm excited too. Thank you for having me, though. And we are here to talk about, you have some, a, a new album that you're getting ready to release uh, coming in stores February the 17th. Living it. We're so, uh, we're ready for some new Dorinda music, I'm telling you. We're ready for a full album. So tell us a little bit about this album, who you worked with and in the process and all of that great stuff. Well, of course, this is my fifth album. This is like my second album with uh, E1 and I'm really, really um, excited about it because it um, really talks about my journey. Um, and the last album that I did was I Survived and that really kind of talked about me. Um, actually, I almost lost my, actually, the house caught on fire and how I survived that. And um, this one, um, which I was in the place of actually losing my house, and God has allowed me to um, to get it back. So I was really, really um, happy about what God is doing. And of course, I worked with some of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest producers, Joe uh, Flip Wilson, who did a phenomenal job producing it, and then some incredible writers um, in L.A. and all over. They all came and sat with me and heard my testimony, and um, the rest is history. Uh, so the title, well, actually the single that uh, everybody's been talking about is Bless This House, and it's really actually my testimony of what I've gone through. So um, I I'm just so grateful to know that, of course, this season of my life um, is a faith journey, and uh, that's what we're here to talk about. This, as you said, this is your fifth album, and through your entire career, you've always been so transparent in sharing your testimony with the people of with the people of God, and we truly, truly appreciate you for that. And we're able to connect with with you for that. Tell me, how important do you think it is that gospel artists continue just to share their lives, their stories, and their testimonies with the people they're trying to reach? Because we're actually living in a day where um, we can connect with uh, now our fans which um, before we would, you know, go so far away from our fans, but now we can really connect with them. Social media is here, you, you know, websites, and they, it's just a click of a button now. And then not only that, but people that support you down through the years. I mean, people have listened to our music, uh, the Clark Sisters, and well wishes for years. And now to even see that we are, we've been out here for over 40 years. Can you believe that? <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah. So I, it's just really a blessing to be able to connect with the fans. And this is a day of um, reality. You see a lot of reality shows out because it's talking about the realness of people and seeing, um, you know, that they're just they're no better than anybody else. You know, so this is what we are. We're supposed to be more transparent, especially those Christians. We are supposed to definitely live a life um, a Christ-like where uh, everybody can actually see the Christ in us. They can, they can kind of feel what we're going through. And that's what, why it's so important to make sure that you connect with people that, um, that definitely support you. And, you know, this is where we are. You know, of course, radio has always been there. But now they have this technology where we can uh, definitely talk to our fans. And that's, that's why I'm so, so grateful about where we are in this season. Of and you know, Ms. Dorinda, you are one of the hardest working women in gospel music. You're super busy. You know, in addition wow. to being a recording artist and evangelist, you have your own radio show, television show, you have these fashion lines, jewelry, clothes, all this stuff, your conferences, and, and now a new reality show in addition to being a, a, a family woman of God. How in the world do you balance it all? Uh, that question is asked all the time. Um, I'll tell you what, it's definitely... God giving me the fortitude to really sustain um, in this day and time, and then making sure 
that you have the people um, that, that keep your world together. And what I mean by that, of course, you know, my daughter travels with me. Um, she kind of knows mama. She knows what I need on the road. Um, and then my office, uh, the, the wonderful people in my office. My sister also works with me. You know, they kind of keep everything. And, of course, you have the record company that kind of, you know, keep your record moving. And, um, and then you have all of these other people that uh, that are the head of every entity that I'm involved in. My fashion line, I have a person that has that. Um, the, the two networks, of course, uh, the Word Network and then the uh, TCT, I have two people that handle that. So that's how we're able to balance everything is the people that are in place um, to keep that ball rolling, you know, to keep the wheel turning. You know, if you don't have to, uh, you know, change the wheel, you just re reinvent it. And that's right. what people do people make you, uh, you know, they keep you out there, keep things moving for you. So that's why I'm so blessed to be able to have a people, you know, that can keep my world turning. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. And you mentioned, uh, we talked about reality. You have a new reality show coming out. You're a part of the Preachers of Detroit. Tell us what encouraged you to become a part of this particular show. Who can really talk about Detroit, but people that were from Detroit, right? Right. Um, I was born and raised in Detroit. Of course, my mom um, and my dad, that's how they met. Of course, they were, my dad was from Atlanta. My mom was from Selma. They came to Detroit, and um, of course, uh, that's where uh, my dad had church. He pastored a church. My mom was a musician. Um, so we actually, to make a long story short, we we actually been born and raised in Detroit. Came from the the east side to the west side, and uh, uh, you know the home that everybody talks about. The Clark sisters grew up in that home on the northwest side of Detroit. Uh, um, everybody. What is it, Sorrento? Sorrento is the street. Everybody talks about that. Um, uh, uh, you know, just just to be born and raised in a city where you've seen, um, you know, the recession hit real hard, and it hit so hard until people were walking away from their homes and um, and moving to other cities, and um, of course, it just got so bad. So. Um, I stayed there, and in the midst of me staying there, uh, we're talking about uh, the testimony of my album, The Blessed House. I was about to lose my house. I was right in the middle of that recession, and God brought me through. So um, when we got to, um, actually, someone called and asked if I wanted to really be a part of the Preachers of Detroit, um, of course, being in the ministry for over 20 years. 20 or 30 something years and being an evangelist and um, being uh, an administrator at my church and uh, preaching all across the country, being the elect lady of the International um, Church of God in Christ Evangelism Department and just so many things, so many his so much history in Detroit um, that I was just elated to be a part of the preachers and to be a part of the cast. So we're really talking about how we're balancing family ministry and um you know just how, how are we really doing this and then um uh, just seeing the renovation of detroit and how it's all coming back, back together so we're the preachers that are um on the rise of actually bringing detroit back spiritually so that's what we're doing Amen. Amen. And, you know, speaking of preachers, we know this week uh, we we laid to rest one of the greats in gospel music, Pastor Andre Crouch. And um, you and your family had the privilege of being a part of that. And even with your family, the legendary Clark sisters and the legendary Clark families, you guys are one of those families. You're legends in the gospel industry. How was it being a part of that moment in history, saying goodbye to Pastor Crouch and honoring his life. Tell us about that experience. You know, it was uh, one of the greatest experiences I never um, came across. And I know we've lost quite a few people in the gospel music industry. But this, um, it kind of reminded me, um, and, I, and I wanted to say this on a, on a, on a good note, of course, it reminded me of, of, of Michael Jackson because he was just that powerful. Um, Pastor Andre just, I mean, he gave his whole life to gospel music. He didn't change. He was always, um, 
you know, relevant for the times. And, uh, you know, he's standing in the forefront of gospel music. Everybody call him now the, the father of gospel. Of course, we lost the, um, the late, great uh, Reverend Cleveland. And then now here we have uh, lost another great uh, gospel warrior who really transcend time. And this last album that he did, I'm so glad he did it because it really allowed us to see his worth all these years. And so we're going to definitely miss um, Pastor Andre, but of course his um, sibling, of course, Sandra, is still here to reflect off the memories of of this great uh, legend. And uh, I'm telling you, just being there at that um, at West Angeles to see all of the gospel um, comrades that um, just was there to pay the respect. It was a blessing to see us all come together to share the stage and to reminisce on all of the wonderful um, songs, awesome songs that he had written down the years. You know, Dr. Cole, we would truly miss Pastor Crouch and uh, we loved him. And you know, we love you. I just want to let everybody know out there that Dr. Cole, she is just as sweet, just as kind, loving, beautiful on the inside and out as you think she is. She's a wonderful person and we just want to give you your flowers. We truly, truly appreciate and love you. Thank you so much, Andrew. All right, so listen, we're about to take a listen to the new single and I would love it if you would set it up and introduce it to our listeners. 